We've been collaborating for over 10 years now as Boredom Research um, and all the projects we do run over extended periods of time. So we produce a lot of generative artworks, um, online environments um, and public installations as well. So Real Snail Mail is a web mail service like any other. Only in Real Snail Mail, part of the journey depends on the efforts of the snail to carry the message for about 50 centimetres. Real Snail Mail uses uh, radio frequency identification technology and how this is normally used is for speed and efficiency so people use it to track parcels or for key fobs. I think one thing about email is that it's so fast, it's so efficient, it's so precise that we kind of have become very used to it and comfortable with it. We're aware that we can send an email to anyone anywhere in the world in a fraction of a second and we start to expect them to respond in the same way we expect people to re respond quickly and precisely and accurately. And in a way we're kind of completely reversing that and allowing people to um, really think about what messages they send. And so as a means of communication email has become quite inhuman in a way, quite lifeless. It's a mechanical system, it's a very efficient, perfect, accurate mechanical system. And by bringing the snails in it kind of brings life back into that system, it brings Predictability, randomness. They meander around in the enclosure and meet another snail and engage in lots of different activity with, with different snails. And you know, that can intercept the message and, and take much longer. The snails live on a tabletop garden and in that garden we have a number of stations where the snails can collect and forward emails. So at each one of those stations we have a reader which interrogates a small chip that's glued onto the shell of the snail. So if the snail is available and it passes over a collection reader, it will be assigned a mail bag of 10 emails. And then we hope that at some point in the future, the same snail will pass over a forwarding reader that then forwards those emails on their journey. One of the first tasks that we have to, have to do when we arrive to install the work is the snails um, have been sent from a snail farm and they're hibernating and, and we have to kind of clean the snails up and we give them a little bath before, and clean them up and prepare them to have the chips glued onto their shell. And sometimes it gets kind of quite chaotic as snails escape and we have to try and stop them from crawling over each other because the glue stays wet for about half an hour. The readers that we have on the table make the connection between the installation and the service. So they're, they're how we kind of connect the emails with the snails. What anyone can do is they go to the website, so you go to realsnailmail.net, and you can uh, click on new message, and it works like any webmail service, are presented with um, the usual fields, and then you click send, and then it sends it to the server at lightning speed, but then it sits in a queue, and at the moment the queue is over 9,000 emails that are waiting to be delivered, and your message gets appended to the bottom of that queue, and then it has to wait till it gets right to the top before a snail can pick it up. Often we we get contacted by the sender um, that gets quite excited about um, the snail because they've picked up their message but they can't actually remember what they initially wrote and then we've had one particular case where um, someone actually emailed us because he received a email from um, his partner but his partner had passed away and he didn't know that his partner had sent the message and he said it was at a time in his life when um, he really needed to to hear from his partner and he was really touched by that. We kind of started by asking ourselves, is there space in a speed obsessed world for a service that takes time? And ever since we've been working on Real Snail Mail, we've ended up kind of following this same pathway where we've been speeding up and speeding up or finding ways to kind of speed up the system because it was running too slow. And we've been kind of struggling to find the right kind of slow, a type of slowness that allows people to reflect 
on the communications that they send. There's, I mean, there's certain kind of thresholds that we have to maintain. Like, for example, it's really important that people are still alive. <laughs> Um, so we have to kind of keep the system working within a certain bound. We don't really know where that is. We don't really know how long the email sh should take. But at the same time, we don't want to just keep optimizing and, and speeding things up.